Keeping a record of all the thread colors for all your designs for all your customers and all the different colored garments they have it on can be complicated. Well, that was until Welcome Embroidery Studio Digital Edition. So let's take a look how we recolor embroidery designs in Embroidery Studio. Let's start off by taking a closer look of the color toolbar in Wilcom Embroidery Studio Digital Edition. In this video, I'll touch on some of the important parts of the color toolbar, not all the options, just enough to get you started using Embroidery Studio and recoloring your new or existing designs. The first option in the color toolbar is the colorway selector. In Wilcom Embroidery Studio, you can define multiple colorways for a single design. And a colorway is a color sequence of that design designed for a particular color garment. For example, on a white garment, you might have one thread color sequence. And on a black or blue garment, you might have a different color or thread sequence. They're saved as colorways in the single EMB file. So you have a permanent record of the colors of that design that you've sewn on different colored garments. The next section is the background and display option. This is where you can change the background of your design. And the background does vary based on the colorway. So in this case, for my first colorway, this is for a light cream style garment. So I will choose the fabric option and I'll keep it at pure cotton. Then from the edit list, I will choose this uh, cream color that I've used before and click OK. And it's now applied a cream style fabric color in the background of my design. Now moving along to the next section, this first green icon here shows me the active color I've got selected in my color palette. So while you're digitizing and creating new shapes, when you select a color, it will highlight the active color here just to show you what your current color is selected. Now the first thing you'll probably notice with this design is it looks a little bit strange from a color perspective. It's just green, blue, and red. Well, sometimes that's actually a good way to digitize a design. Imagine, for example, that a design has lots of similar shades of uh, browns or blues and not a lot of contrast. So when you're designing shapes and you're digitizing on top of each other, such as this green background here, the blue and the red, if they're all of a similar shade, it might be hard to tell them apart. So the default color palette in Wilcom Embroidery Studio deliberately uses contrast colors so while you are designing, you can clearly see them on screen and they stand out from each other. But of course, when you want to finish your design and save that away, you do want to assign the proper thread colors for that design. So I started this off and it's currently using the default high contrast colors of the palette. So I can see it on screen, but now I'm ready to assign the real thread colors to this design. Now you'll also notice that I've got 15 possible color choices in my palette. These also represent the needles on my machine. So if I'm using a machine that accepts a file format that includes the needle assignment information, like the Baradon or Tajima machine, for example, whatever needle I select here is the same needle it can auto change on the machine, minimizing the uh, risk of a incorrect color being selected or making it easier for your operator to get those threads set up and auto change on that machine for you. So I'm using needle one, which is green, needle two, which is blue, and needle three, which is red. Again, not the correct colors, but the high contrast initial digitizing colors that I used. Now, even though I've got 15 and I might have a machine that has 18 needles, I can click the plus symbol and add more and add additional colors as I want. And you can keep adding as many as you want. And of course, take them away as well to the maximum number of colors you want for your machine or for that particular design. Now, I only have three colors. I don't need all 15, but I don't want to delete them. I might want to use them later to put a name underneath or add additional objects later. So while I'm digitizing to take away the clutter and the noise, I can hide the unused colors. And it's just showing me what's actively used in my design. The other option is instead of unhiding them, I can permanently delete those and it will remove all those colors entirely. If I did have pre-assigned pre threads, those threads would be removed. And when I add new colors again, it'll add it from that default high contrast color palette. And I'll have to recolor them again. Now the final option we're going to explore in this video tutorial is the thread section, the thread palette editor, where you can select your thread chart and assign those directly to your design. 
So let's start off with that as our first task here. Again, I've got a newly digitized design using high contrast colors, not the real colors I want on the machine, but great to use while digitizing. And now I'm ready to assign the actual thread colors. Now in my business, I use Madeira thread, for example, but it could be any thread chart that we support in Embroidery Studio. And to access your thread charts, you open up the thread palette area and select on select thread charts. By default, you'll notice that the Wilcom thread chart is available. And that's what we're seeing here on the right screen here. And this is just a generic palette that we've given you to create new designs using lots of different colors that might be available in various threads. But I don't wanna use the Wilcom one. I will remove that and I'll scroll down and find the Madeira Classic 40, which is the chart I want to use. And I'll add that to my selection. If I have more than one thread chart, I can add that as well. You can add as many as you want, but it of course will make your thread collection much larger to select from. Or you can manage your thread charts and even create your own unique thread chart with just the colors that you have in your business. So I'll click OK, and I've now assigned my Madeira thread chart, and I've now got a really large collection of all the Madeira threads. Now you may not have all of them, so again, that's where you might make your own custom thread chart and just add the Madeira threads that you have in your business. But for the point of this demo, I'll keep the entire chart selected. Now you probably also notice that it looks to be a lot of shade of pink at the top. That's because I've got the pink color in the palette selected and it's automatically sorted the Madeira thread chart to put the closest matching Madeira thread to the top as the recommended one that you use for that pink. And as you go down, they become less and less pink and of course, don't match up eventually. If I go back to the green color again, the palette will automatically sort and show the closest color green. In this case, it's saying 1051 is the closest Madeira thread color to uh, my default green in my, in my palette. But again, these are just default colors, not the real threads I want. So in this case, I need to manually type in and search for that thread in the chart. Now I've already gone through these colors with the customer and I know exactly what they want. They want three different colors and I've got those Madeira numbers written down. So now I just need to search for them in the palette. So I go up to the code or name section and for the first color, needle number one, I want to do 1022, which is a light kind of cream yellow color. And I'll double click that and it assigns it to that color. Then I click on the next one, number two. And again, I search and this is 1192, which is a mid brown. And I double click and add that. And the final one I want for needle number three is 1173. And press OK. And it's now assigned that to that palette as well. So now I've got my three different colors set up exactly as I want from my Madeira thread chart. And the benefit for that is when I print off that worksheet, it will tell me color number one is on needle one, which is the Madeira 1022. Color number two is on needle two, which is the Madeira 1192. Then color number three is back to needle number one, which is Madeira 1022 again. And finally, color number four is needle three, which is Madeira 1173. So that's my first colorway configured. But what if I want to sew the same design on the same job, but on a different type of garment, on a blue garment, for example, or a navy garment, in a different set of colors that coordinate with that garment. Well, that's where I come down to the colorway editor. And at the moment, we have our first colorway, which I'm now going to rename. And I'll call that cream for the cream fabric background. And I'll expand that open, and I will add a brand new colorway and we might call this one navy. We're gonna do a navy blue background. We'll base it off the cream colorway, so it'll copy those colors across initially. But for the background, I wanna modify that from this cream color, and we'll choose a dark blue or navy style color. And now I've got one navy and one cream colorway to work for. Now, the colors are not correct for the navy one. Again, the customer wants some shades of blue to complement or match that particular uh, design. And if I knew my colors, I could again search for them on screen or I can just visualize them. I can scroll down through the list, finding a color that looks appropriate. And here's a nice light blue, 1132. So I'll double click that. 
Then I want a more of a darker style blue, I guess. So I'll scroll down and find a, a nice navy blue or a dark blue and this one here will do, 1277. And then finally I've got the top color, which in the other design was a little bit lighter. So we might come down to some of the lighter shade blues and we might grab this 1266. And I now added that to that colorway as well. But again, if you've got your chart and you know your numbers, you can search for them straight away there without having to scroll through and manually locate those, those colors. So in the end result, I've got my navy garment with all my navy colors and my cream garment with all my cream colors. And again, they're saved away in that single EMB file. So if I go back to my worksheets and I open up my options, and I'll do just production summary for now. And under colorways, I will show all colorways, my cream and navy, and click OK. Now I can see my single design has my cream background with the colors for the cream, and the navy background with the thread colors for the navy. And once you're done, make sure you go back and save that EMB file. So all those colors and all the changes you made are saved away permanently as a part of that file. Now, sometimes you get a design from a customer or you might digitize a design yourself that is already visually colored with the correct colors. So on screen, it looks like it should be the way it is. It's got the greens and the blues and the yellows and all the other colors that you've built as a part of that. But the colors are still generic default colors. They're not assigned to a particular thread chart. Well, there is a very quick single click button that will automatically take these generic colors and automatically match them to the thread chart you've currently got set up in your Wilcom system. Now, if you remember, I have the Madeira Classic thread chart selected for my chart with all those threads available. And at the moment, again, there are these very generic green, yellow, orange, white, very generic colors that have been made as a part of that design, not the real Madeira thread chart. But by using this icon here, which is match all, with a single click, it will go through and automatically match up every single one of your colors with an actual real Madeira thread chart. So in this case, it says the first color is 1051, the next one is 1064, 1065, the white is a 1003 and so on and so forth. It's gone through and automatically matched up each one of those, which again will appear on your production worksheet for your operator to use and stitch out on the machine.